Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of Bayer Aspirin. As all of you know, Mr. Chameleon is known in the police as Chameleon, the man of many faces, who appears in various impersonations to track down his prey. The audience always knows who Mr. Chameleon is, but the criminal he is tracking down seldom does. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon and the case of the Jewels of Death. New York City, after one o'clock in the morning, is a place where anything can happen and does. And the ring of a doorbell in those early hours can be a terrifying sound, as Helen Casey can testify. And as she slips on a robe in her attractive West Side apartment, she says to herself, Who can that be? Perhaps I shouldn't go to the door. Oh, but it might be something important. I, I can't take a chance. Yes? Who is it? What do you want? Why, there's no one out there. They must have gone. <gasps> oh, it's you. I thought it might be. I've been wanting to explain to you. I've been wanting to explain it. <laughs> and an hour later, in quite a different neighborhood, among the swarming tenements of the east side, another sleeper is aroused by a pounding on the door this time. And Cyrus Allen, a poor little pawnbroker, goes to the door of his shop. All right, I'm coming. Merciful heavens, what sort of an hour is this to get a man out of bed? Can't they see the place is closed? Yes? You? What are you doing here? You've never come here before. I, I, I've been wanting to explain to you. If you just give me a chance to explain to you... Oh, no! No! And now, at Central Headquarters, the following morning, we find Mr. Chameleon with the Commissioner of Police. And the famous detective, the man of many faces, is frowning as he studies the report, which has just come in. That's very strange, Commissioner. This girl, Helen Casey, lived in a very swanky apartment in the 50s. And yet she was killed in the identical manner as old Alan, the pawnbroker. It's chloroform to death, Chameleon. Mm-hmm, chloroform. Both... Knocked out first and then bound in such a way that any effort to free themselves would only hasten their death. Someone picked up that rope trick in China. In addition, the killer fastened a handkerchief soaked in chloroform around the victim's nose and mouth. Not a very nice way to die. Eh? Yes, but why the two murders? Since obviously they were committed by the same man. It must have been a man, Chameleon. It would take a man to overpower them. Well, that, Commissioner, is the only thing that I'm sure of at the moment... Casey Girl's apartment was violently ransacked, so was the pawn shop. Commissioner, that pawnbroker, Cyrus Allen, hasn't he been under suspicion as a fence? Of course he has. Aha! Well, now we're getting somewhere. Come in. Well, if it isn't Detective Sergeant Arnold. And look at his shining face, will you, Dave? What's the matter? Have you caught the killer? Nope. Well, I've got news about that Casey dame, Mr. Chameleon. She worked at Farshawn, the jewelers, right up to last week. Farshawn? Mm-hmm. She worked for the fabulous Farshawn. Well, now we are getting somewhere. Hello, operator. Uh, put a call through to Farshawn, the jeweler on Fifth Avenue. I want to speak to Mr. Farshawn himself. Do you know Farshawn, Chameleon? Uh, not the man himself, no, Commissioner, but um, I've often bought things at his shop. What a layout he has. He's designed some of the most beautiful pieces of jewelry I have ever seen. And charges fantastic prices. Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Farshawn, please. This is Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters. Oh, he isn't. I see. Are you his secretary? Well, perhaps you can help, Miss Kent. Um, I'm uh, calling about Helen Casey. Oh, you know about her death, do you? I understand that she worked for Mr. Farshawn. You fired her? For what? Ah, uh -huh. oh, for stealing. Yes. They found one of their rings was missing. Uh -huh. uh, tell me, Miss Kent, aren't you uh, pretty careful about whom you uh, hire for the jewelry shop? Oh, I see. 
Well, thank you. If I need more information, I'll call you back. That girl, Miss Kent, has a charming voice. So what, Mr. Chameleon? So what? Dave, I am extremely sensitive to voices. Miss uh, Kent said that they were shocked about the murder of the Casey girl. She was sent to them by the Apex Agency to get the Mola people. They haven't yet replaced her. Uh, Dave, you um, uh, get the list of all stolen jewelry and bring it to my office. I want to look it over. The Cartwright rubies set in a heart-shaped pendant. Oh, they're worth a small fortune. The Black Pearl of Isis. Well, that'll never turn up. Nor will it. Mr. Chameleon, did you send for me? Uh, yes, come in, Madeline. I want you to go to Farshan's, the jewelers, and order a very uh, special sort of pendant. One that um, corresponds with the one that we have here on the stolen jewelry list. Rubies and diamonds in a heart-shaped setting. But, Mr. Chameleon, you don't think that Farshaw... Well, he's the finest jeweler in town. Surely he wouldn't deal in stolen gems. Uh, Farshaw, my dear, simply designs the pieces. I hear he's a very gentle, vague old man. But um, someone working in a shop may be dealing in stolen gems without his knowledge. But, Mr. Chameleon... Now, you're a very beautiful woman, Madeline, as well as a good detective. I'm sure that they'll believe that someone is quite willing to buy you a ruby pendant. I'll see you this afternoon. You mean you're going to question them? No, no. I mean, I will probably take your order. What? You see, they need a uh, new clerk at Farshan's jewelry shop. And the Apex Agency is sending them a distinguished gray-haired man who walks with a slight limp and uh, comes from a fine old family. His name will be Howard Dillon, Mr. Chameleon to you. Oh, that's to be your disguise. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dillon has an appointment in half an hour with Mr. Farshan's secretary who has a very beautiful voice. I hope her face won't disappoint you. Oh, you are a woman as well as a detective, Madeline. I'll tell you something about Howard Dillon. He's very nearsighted, so Miss Kent's face will be much less important than her voice. Miss Kemp, uh, do you mind my telling you that you have a very beautiful voice? Not at all, Mr. Dillon, though it won't get you the job here at Fashan. Well, what will? Mm, probably your distinguished appearance and your social connection. Oh, uh, here's Mr. Paul Stewart, the vice president of Fashan's. Mr. Stewart, this is Howard Dillon. Apex sent him over. Oh, yes? Not that their recommendation is worth much after that dreadful Casey girl... Uh, Miss Casey was murdered, wasn't she? Am I supposed to weep over that? Apparently she had it coming to her. Well, Mr. Stewart, shall we engage Mr. Dillon? Well, shall we engage who, my dear? Are we taking on new help? Oh, Mr. Farshan, yes. This is Howard Dillon, Mr. Farshan. I am deeply honored, sir. I've admired your work as a jewel designer for many years. I consider you to be in a class with a world-renowned Van Vecht of Amsterdam. He has a pleasant tongue, Elise. I've noticed that, Mr. Farshan. He also has excellent credentials. He has, eh? Well, what do you say, Paul? It's up to you, Mr. Farshan. No, I think not. I'll leave it up to Elise. She always knows best. Well, come along, Paul. Good day, Mr. Dillon. Good day, sir. Uh, Miss Kent, uh, do I get the job? I think I'd enjoy working here. A great many people would. This is a treasure house, Mr. Dillon. As fabulous as anything out of the Arabian Nights. For instance, there's a Maharaj of India who comes to Mr. Farshan and... Oh. Yes? Oh, but you'll hear about that later. There is one thing I must caution you about, however. If any customer consults you about an unusual piece of jewelry, always send for Mr. Stewart, who will tell you if it can be made. Uh, not Mr. Farshan, Mr. Mr. Kent. Farshan is a genius. He does the actual designing in the studio in his home. But Mr. Stewart, who's worked with him for years, knows what he'll undertake and what he won't. So, send for Mr. Stewart. Is that understood? And it is also understood that the job is yours. Principally, I'm afraid, because I happen to like you. Now, 
now, just a moment, if you please. Miss um, Evans, did you say? Madeline Evans. Uh, just a moment, Miss Evans, while I call Mr. Stewart and ask him about that pendant. Uh, Mr. Stewart, uh, may I have a word with you, please, sir? Yes, yes, Mr. Dillon. What can I do for you? Uh, this young lady, uh, Miss Evans, is looking for an antique pendant set with rubies. Uh, do we have such a piece, or could Mr. Farshaw make one up? A pendant set with rubies? Yes, my mother once had one. A heart-shaped pendant with three large rubies, the outer rim set with diamonds. I've had a sentimental desire to own such a pendant, and now a, a friend has told me to order one if I can. I see. Why do you look at me so strangely, Mr. Stewart? I assure you my friend is quite able to pay for it. I don't doubt it, Miss Evans. Just occurred to me that we might have such a piece. Seems to be Mr. Farshawn once designed a similar pendant. Miss Evans, suppose you come with me and give me your address and telephone number. I'll get in touch with you. Splendid. And thank you, Mr. Um... Uh, Dylan, and I want you to know, Miss Evans, that you were my first customer, and I do hope you get your pendant. So do I, Mr. Dillon. Well, you look extremely pleased with yourself. Well, Miss Kent, I didn't hear you coming. I was just keeping an eye on you. I feel in a way you're my protege, Mr. Dillon. Well, I can't think of anything that I'd enjoy more than having you keep an eye on me, as long as I'm allowed to indulge in the same pastime. <laughs> you know, I really do like you. I like you, too. Miss Kent, uh, would you consider it presumptuous if I asked you to have dinner with me? Well, that depends upon how soon you wanted me to dine with you. Tonight? Tonight is perfect. I like presumptuousness in a man, Mr. Dillon, as long as the man is attractive, of course. Enjoying yourself, Elise? It's wonderful, Howard. But we always have wonderful evenings together. I have yet to go out with you that everything wasn't just special. Well, like yourself, Elise, you are very lovely, you know. Am I? Mm -hmm. Do you think you could fall in love with me? I think I'm a little in love with you. Well, thank you. <laughs> but uh, seriously, all you need with that white evening gown is the black pearl of Isis. The black... What do you know about the black pearl of Isis? It was stolen, wasn't it? Uh, since I've been working at... Farshawn's jewelry shop, I have acquired a tremendous interest in precious stones. Well, keep it under control. It's like a drug, Howard, that love of precious stones. I know. Oh, but uh, excuse me for a moment, will you, while I go to the powder room? Yes, of course. Mr. Chameleon, I mean, Mr. Dillon. Madeline, what are you doing here? Oh, dining out, just as you are. I have a social life, too. Oh, I see. Well, what about that pendant? Farshawn phoned me today. They're going to have it for me. Good, good. If that turns out to be the missing Cartwright pendant, or if the rubies turn out to be those famous rubies, then we'll know that someone at Farshawn's is dealing in stolen gems, and those two ghastly murders will... Look out. Here she comes. Well, thank you, Mr. Dillon, and you'll probably see me at Farshawn's tomorrow. Good night. Uh, good night, Miss Evans. Lisa, I was just talking to Miss Evans, my first customer, you remember? How could I forget her? She's very attractive. And I happen to be an extremely jealous woman. Jealous of Miss Evans? I hardly know her. Then leave it like that. After all, Howard, you don't want to get mixed up with the detective, do you? A what? Oh, yes. I found out this afternoon that that beautiful girl, Miss Evans, is really a detective. Seems too bad. I mean, what a profession for anyone. Detectives must have such very unhealthy lives. <laughs> Mr. Chameleon and the case of the Jewels of Death continues in just a moment. If you have an ordinary headache and want fast relief, get Bayer Aspirin. And when you buy, do as millions do, make it a point never to ask for it by the name Aspirin alone. Instead, always be sure to buy by name. Ask for genuine Bayer Aspirin. And for proof that Bayer Aspirin is one thing that really works and works quickly, simply drop a Bayer Aspirin tablet in a glass of water. Within two seconds, you'll see it start to disintegrate. And that's exactly what it does in your stomach. Almost instantly, you take a Bayer aspirin. It's ready to go to work. Another reason why so many people insist on Bayer aspirin when they buy is this. Bayer aspirin has been used without ill effect by millions of normal people. 
So remember, for fast and dependable relief from headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain, always ask for Bayer Aspirin by its full name, never by the name Aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the case of the Jewels of Death. It is the following noon, and in the police commissioner's office, we find Madeline Evans and Mr. Chameleon with the commissioner. And of the three of them, only Mr. Chameleon remains calm, for even the commissioner is talking excitedly. But don't you see, Chameleon, they're on to you. I'm sure of it. They discover that Madeline here was a policewoman, and the chances are they suspect you. Can't be helped, Commissioner. I've got to continue my work at Farshan's jewel shop as Howard Dillon, whether somebody knows the truth about me or not. But they do, Mr. Chameleon. Just the way that woman told you that she knew about me. Doesn't that prove it? Mm, Perhaps. I received a very courteous phone call this morning from Paul Stewart himself, saying that they'd found that it was impossible to make a ruby pendant like the one I described. So they've been warned. Now, if Paul Stewart and that Kent woman are dealing in stolen gems... Paul Stewart is a vicious customer. I knew that immediately. But it's possible that Elise Kent... That she what, Chameleon? Mr. Chameleon started to say that she must be innocent, since she has such a perfectly delightful voice. That, my dear Madeline, is a dirty crack and not true. No question but that someone at Farshawn's is dealing in stolen gems and right under poor Farshawn's nose. But until we have proof... Well, you know my motto, the innocent must be protected and the guilty must be punished. Even if you're personally attracted to the guilty? Commissioner, will you please remind this young lady that I'm a cop? Now, back to work at Farshan's. Another day, another dollar. In my disguise as the jeweler's clerk, Dylan. Chameleon, you're in danger. I'm convinced of it. Yes, so am I, Commissioner. But you forget there have been two brutal murders. We're dealing with death as well as stolen gems. Besides, I'm curious about uh, Farshan's masterpiece, which he's making for that Maharaja. I'm just wondering if by any chance it contains a black pearl. Now listen, Elise. You're playing a dangerous game and it's got to stop. It's a matter of life and death. Who's death, Paul? I think you know. You must be there tonight, that's all. I... Did you hear footsteps? No. All right, I'll be there at 11 o'clock sharp. You can count on me, Paul. I'll wait, be wait, at the... Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Is that you, Mr. Dillon? What were you doing? Eavesdropping? I uh, know, Mr. Stewart. I started to come into Mr. Farshan's office, and I realized you and Miss Kent were having a private conversation. Oh, you did? Then why did you listen? He wasn't listening, Paul. You're being ridiculous. Sorry. Better get into the shop, Dylan. That is, if you're really serious about the job. Well, what ails him, anyhow, Elise? He, uh, disappointed in love? Could it be that I have a rival? No, you have no rival. Well, then how about dinner in the theater tonight? I I can't. I I have a date. With Paul Stewart at 11 o'clock? I did overhear that much. Do you really care if I have a date with Paul Stewart? I'd care a great deal if you had a date with that girl detective friend of yours. Elise, are you meeting Paul Stewart tonight? And if so, where? Tell me, you must. Oh, Howard, don't be silly. You're imagining things. Of course I don't have a date with Paul Stewart tonight. You're sure we're heading in the right direction, Mr. Chameleon? No, I'm not. I'm taking a chance on it, Dave. But some tremendous transaction is taking place tonight. Where, I don't know. At least didn't dare tell me that. Best you could do is send me the time. But the police are watching the jewelry shop and Paul Stewart's apartment house. And at least Kent's place, too. Not enough, Dave. Not enough. I want to be there on the spot, personally, before another human soul is chloroformed out of existence. Just pray that I've hit on the right place. Well, 11 o'clock, Mr. Chameleon. Mm-hmm. Here we are. This must be Farshan's house. His workshop, I understand, is on the top floor. Mm. The place is dark. Mm. Let's try the front door. What? Are you nuts? No. Ah. Door's been left unlocked. Then it's a trap. Maybe. And maybe not. 
Even if it is, Dave, we are going to walk right into it. Okay, here we are, Dave. This must be the workshop. Look, Mr. Chameleon, I don't like this. No one's even tried to stop us. Don't be impatient, Dave. They will. They will in time. See if this door is open, too. Oh, there's a light on in here. Yes. A light shining down on the work table. There's a single piece of jewelry lying on the table. I think we're supposed to go in and look at that. Holy smoke! Mr. Chameleon, look at it, will you? Hmm. Beautiful, isn't it? Perfect setting for the Black Pearl of Isis. A what? The Black Pearl of Isis, about to be shipped to that Maharaja, I imagine. Well, good evening, gentlemen. What are you doing here? Did Paul Stewart bring you, Mr. Dillon? Uh, not exactly, Mr. Farshaw. Oh, I see you've been admiring my handiwork. Do you like it? It's magnificent. Uh, where did you get that unusual pearl? It's superb, isn't it, Mr. Dillon? Paul Stewart got it for me. He gets me all my precious stones. I'm simply an adulpated artist, I'm afraid. I specify what I want, and he produces it. Well, the uh, black pearl of Isis is quite something to produce. That was stolen three years ago from a tremendously wealthy Chinese warlord. What? Sto- Paul! Take it easy, Farshaw. Nothing will happen to you. But these two gentlemen had better get their hands up. <laughs> ah, ow. Sorry, Mr. Stewart. I was a little quicker than you were. Uh, Dave, you got his gun? No, Mr. Chameleon, I've got it. Oh, so you are Mr. Chameleon. I should have known it. And who's Mr. Chameleon? Paul, I don't understand this. They say this pearl is stolen. What is it all about? And this is Howard Dillon. His name isn't Chameleon. You know perfectly well, Mr. Farshawn, that my name is Chameleon. I think you've known it for at least 24 hours. You also know I'm a detective who works in disguise. But believe me, I am not the actor that you are. What? Really, this is all so, so bewildering. Paul, tell this man, this, this chameleon, that I don't know what he's talking about. Mr. Farshans, quite innocent chameleon. He didn't know the gems were stolen. You are afraid of him, aren't you, Stuart? You're so afraid of this man that you'd rather take the rap for him than have him turn against you. No. No, you're lying. You know how Farshan operates. You know how he brutally murdered those two fences who held out on him, tried to keep the jewels that he wanted. Chameleon. You have an alibi, Stuart. At the time of those murders, you were spending the weekend with your sister. We know. We've checked on it. But uh, Mr. Farshan has no alibi, have you, Mr. Farshan? I retire every night at midnight, sir. You can never prove otherwise, and my friends won't talk against me. One of them will. The only one in your outfit who wasn't afraid of you. Where is she, Farshan? Where is Elise Kent? I have no idea. Dave? Yes, sir. You search the place and start on this floor. Yes, Mr. Chameleon. And stop smiling, Mr. Farshan. You think that we can't find her? Maybe we can't without your help. But you are going to help us. You will tell me where she is or I will kill you. I'll kill you and say you tried to escape. Mr. Parshall. He's joking, Paul. He won't do that. He's a responsible police officer. I'm also a human being. And if you don't tell me where Elise is, you won't leave this room alive. He's in love with her, Mr. Parshall. He'll do it. He'll kill us. You're quite right. I'll kill you both. I'll kill you unless you tell me what you've done with Elise. I believe you. All right, Mr. Comedian, you win. You'll find Elise's body hidden in that chest behind you. You feeling better, Elise? Yes. Harshan tried to murder me for giving him away. Three more minutes and the chloroform would have done its work. I was almost gone. And yet I could hear Paul Stewart say that you loved me, that you'd really kill them if you couldn't find me. Mr. Comedian, would you have killed them? No, Elise, I'm an officer of the law. I don't kill wantonly. But just for a moment, I must have meant it. 
I wouldn't have convinced them otherwise. Farshan isn't human. He's a hideous combination of a great artist and a criminal. He had to have the greatest jewels in the world to work with. Nothing else would satisfy him. And yet you stayed on with him. You helped him, at least. I've tried to even that score. I've turned state's evidence. You already have my statement that Farshan was the murderer. That's what will save you from a heavy sentence. And I personally will testify that you helped me break the case. That's not enough. I don't want to go to jail even for a year. You'll help me escape, won't you? It won't be difficult. Oh, darling, please. You know you're a little in love with me. Please let me go. No one will know you helped me. Elise, I'm deeply grateful to you. I'm fond of you, too. I'll do all I can to help you, but I can't let you go free. You've been working with criminals, and I'm a cop. I lied when I said I was a human being first. Mr. Chameleon, are you all right? <laughs> Hello, Madeline. Yes, I'm uh, quite all right. I was just uh, taking Miss Kent down to police headquarters. Would you like to come along? I'm sure she'd like to come along. Then the two of you can talk shop far into the night. When I look at Miss Evans, I'm afraid I realize that there's something to be said for being on the side of the law. Yes, you're quite right, Elise. And from now on, I know that you, too, are going to stay on the side of the law. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Here's how to relieve a common early morning headache quickly. Instantly you get up, take two Bayer aspirin tablets with water, and chances are by the time you finish dressing, your headache is gone. Now, the reason Bayer aspirin works so fast is because it starts to disintegrate within two seconds after you take it. You can see this amazing two-second disintegrating action with your own eyes by dropping a Bayer aspirin tablet in a glass of water. What it does in the water, it does in your stomach. And because it's ready to go to work almost at once, you get really fast relief. In addition, of all pain relievers, none can match Bayer aspirin's record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. So be sure to buy Bayer Aspirin. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in... The May and December Murder Case. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson, with dialogue by Marie Balmer from the original story by Frank and Anne Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. <laughs> Now at last, you can get an utterly new, radically different, incredibly better toothpaste. It's revolutionary new Lion's Toothpaste. And it's better because thousands of laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth show that it actually gets teeth brighter. Two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands. Brighter by far than any other toothpaste. New Lion's Toothpaste does this because it's a new kind of toothpaste with a formula that's completely new, radically different. A toothpaste that cleans without soap, polishes without chalk. Try it. Buy Lion's Toothpaste. Listen for Mr. Chameleon, the new mystery drama, in the May and December murder case next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.